It's a Sunday morning, no NFL football, which is fine because weather rocks right now, unless you're north of, say, Fort Bragg. It's a little cloudy, but highs today in the Bay Area are going to be in the 70s. Highs in Southern California are going to be in the 70s, mid-70s. Highs all this week in the Sacramento Valley up in the Chico. It's after Tuesday, temperatures just kind of go. So it's going to be a spring-like week ahead. But we do have the national map up. And I like this because it shows you the upcoming or current watches and warnings. And greens generally signify some kind of hydro or water related. Browns usually signify wind related watches or advisories. Dark green, usually a flood advisory or a flood warning. And then the blue represents a winter weather advisory. And then purple is winter storm warning. So you go, oh, look, all that. Now, it's a warm storm because it is an atmospheric river. And so you are seeing higher snow levels. And we'll go venture up into the Pacific Northwest. I got some cameras up in this area that I was looking at that's showing rain at pretty high elevations. But anyway, it's going to be an interesting week. Um, but for through Tuesday, this area that's lit is going to stay lit. They're going to have wind advisories and flood warnings. And everything south, which isn't really that far south, is going to be very, very warm. This is my last week at Channel 2 after 33 years. Um, everybody goes, how you feel about it? How you feel about it? It's kind of weird. I, I kind of i am enjoying this a lot just because it's, it, it, truthfully, it's way more fun than TV. Because TV is like... Uh, TV, you know, that old formula was, you know, a bunch of, you know, car robbery stories, murder, um, politicians, weather, sports, right? And that's, so every every night I would kind of be led into with some, I feel a lot, a lot, you know, news can be so negative. And my world is not negative. Weather is almost never negative in my mind. Um, I know it can be devastating. But anyway, I'm leaving after all the time, but I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, pretty good with it because um, I'm enjoying this and we'll see how it goes but I, I have a lot going on too I have this company called weather applied metrics which is uh, we work with the North 49ers and in Major League Baseball we, we do uh, wind modeling for their stadiums so if you ever see vectors or arrows on a broadcast that's us we'll talk about that at length sometime too but anyway so my last week so it's kind of interesting I'm not sure how I feel like I'm not I'm not really you know, super emotional about it because I think it's time, which is interesting, right? I almost feel like I'm not retiring. I feel like I'm just getting started. It's weird. Um, but we'll talk more about that. Okay, so there's your watches. And you can clearly see where the um, Ravenshirk River is and where it is not. Let's go. Okay, let's do the loop. I'll drink some coffee. And you see that line going right up through Oregon and Washington. That is a warm weather event. Snow levels are high. Um, I can pull up a radar. And this is my pay-to-play radar. It's a radar scope. And yes, I will update my links. I'm so sorry. I've been busy. I've been busy lately. Okay, so here is, um, this is the, this is Northern California radar. And you can see where the rain is falling. As far south as kind of shows up let's see if i can pop this off and get some cities in there yeah so ukiah clear lake you're seeing some now i've seen some pretty significant rain totals up around um crescent city let's take a look at those here we go so here's some um, cnfrc this is a little hard on the eyes there's the umqua river eugene okay so we're up in oregon so three inches of water on the coast over three and a half inches. Look at that, five inches of water. Wow, look at that. Just right at the Crescent City area. We talked about them last week. So these are 24-hour rainfall accumulations. And look how quickly they drop away. See the colors changing? So you get south of the atmospheric river. We've seen this in the Bay Area where Marin County gets a foot of rain. San Francisco, 20 miles to the south. 20, no, 10 miles to the south gets quarter inch of rain kid you not the, the haves and the have nots on these rivers is something so and you can see you know there were a few sprinkles in the bay area last night hundredth of an inch kind of a thing but you see where the rain is i'll back out further and you can just look at the big boom right there so there's your bullseye and everything north too that's why there's um, watches and uh, warnings in the pacific northwest so this is up near crescent city and this is over the last couple hours and i just wanted you to see i mean anytime you see it raining on the camera and you can even see the trees moving around it's a they got a real storm up there they got wind they got rain it's the deal um this is up at crescent city i'm not sure what this camera is called this is off the alert california and then we can go to um up by ukiah and you can see it's raining now this is pretty far north 
This is on the Klamath River, near the Klamath River, I believe. And you can see it's not snowing. It's trying to. And you can see some snow at lower elevations, but the higher elevations, it's, it is raining. Um, and here is the model. So this is not what's happening right now. We looked at a radar, which is real time, right? And then we looked at those live pictures, which essentially are live, except by the time you get to this, they're probably old. But you know what I mean? They're live for me right now. So I'm going, oh, yeah, it's raining pretty good in Crescent City, and it's raining pretty good up around, why, I said Ukiah, I meant Wairika, pardon me, on that last camera. Um, I get Wairika, Eureka, and Ukiah mixed up, right? When I was a little kid, I'm like, it's the same place, right? Okay, so here is the forecast model. This is for essentially right now, which I like it, it verifies. So that's one of the things you can do too with these models, the GFS. You can go, you can look at the radar and go, where's it raining right now? And see, and the models, because the models are delayed because of the computations that have to be run before it can be produced. So this model is already behind. But, so that's why we're looking at 10 o'clock this morning and it's actually 10.30. So it's not a forecast anymore. It's kind of like, so you go, oh yeah, it was pretty close, right? It was pretty close. So then we push through this afternoon. There's this afternoon, still Crescent City. You guys are getting hit. And then you get another wave. This is into Monday afternoon. And then you're breaking. So really, this whole thing for the whole atmospheric river for the Pacific Northwest sort of ends on um, Tuesday. Tuesday is when the wind advisories drop. I'm going to try something. And if it goes bad, I am going to um, bail. But I don't know if it will. I, it might. Be, yeah, it went bad already. <laughs> Let's see if I can. So here is Washington and Oregon, right? So you guys up in Seattle, see see in the corner here. That's Seattle. Um, I know it's hard to see you guys. Sorry, but you can see where the, you can see it. There it is. So this is around Tuesday. It goes away, but you can see it's that atmospheric river wants to hang on some moisture in some form or another through Tuesday morning. Okay, so now we can do the accumulation, GFS accumulation. I like this model because you kind of go, oh, how much rain are we going to get and where is it going to rain the hardest? And you can kind of see now we've had the, the model verifies because, yes, we have had a, about a hundredth of an inch in parts of Marin County and parts of uh, the Bay, Central Bay. So we go through and then look at the bullseye. This is through tomorrow morning and that's Crescent City. Look at you guys, man hammering look at that look at the haves and the have not so here is wednesday morning look at that so th we know the model shows that the atmospheric river has gone through so it's going to be a little bit of a break and then this moves in this is more towards that system we've been looking at for the fourth about the fourth of march and then this is adding to it remember but watch what happens in the sierra nevada somewhere around the eighth of look at that boom that smells oh man that smells that smells atmospheric rivery to me just because of the, look at the sheer amount of activity. That's a big one. Um, if that happens, so that's somewhere around the 4th of March, the models, and they've been pretty consistent. They are starting to light up about the 4th of March for basically California down to Southern California. Um, they're showing uh, the doors open, right? That's what I get from that. I, in terms of will it rain that much? Will it rain exactly? No but the doors open. And so March 4th through whatever, looks like it's gonna be a pretty darn wet period. So you can prepare for that, okay? If you're in San Francisco or Los Angeles, you're gonna get a bunch of rain as well. Ocean Beach, big today. When you get the atmospheric rivers and the big storms in the Pacific, they create swell. And so it's eight to 10 foot at Ocean Beach right now, which is approximately 10.45 in the morning. Tides dropping, not a big tide swing, but dangerous. And I, these days are most dangerous at the beach. Because, like I always tell this story, but I've been surfing out here for 40 some years. You know, I've pulled a lot of people out of the water. Like I've, I've, per, I've saved, I saved two guys for sure who were dying, and then I saved probably three other people who got ripped out on boogie boards without wetsuits. This is over the last, mostly 20, 30 years ago before lifeguards, because there wasn't anybody out. But my point is, all, and that's just, I'm, I'm not a hero. I just was in the water, and some guy was floating by me. Um, back in the day, there weren't that many surfers and there weren't that, there were no lifeguards. And so people would get caught out in the, the water. Um, but my point is that surfers are kind of the, the front line. They say, I got stories and then none of them made the newspaper 
Um, and none of my friends, every one of us has a story, every one of us. And that's hundreds of us. And that you, I don't even know all you guys that have pulled guys out, but we pulled a lot of guys out. So why is it so dangerous today? Because it's big, because it's, you know, ocean beach, because it's cloudy, but because there's no surfers. When the surf's not good, there's no surfers. So these kids get jamming around out there and they've had a little too few too many Twinkies. They run out there and they start, you know how you do, you wade in and you get a little wet and then, no, I'm cool, I won't get any wet. And then all of a sudden you're wet to your knee and then, yeah, screw it. And you go in, you're all the way wet. And then this water would be a, na there's a nasty rip right there. Um, so without, when there's not surfers in the water, oh, and that's a whole different scene, isn't it? That's Laguna Beach. Um, when there's not surfers in the water, it's pretty dangerous at Ocean Beach. Um, and especially on a day like today. At Pacifica too, and anywhere on the coast, truthfully. But Ocean Beach, because it's proximity, to urban center, a million people, nine iron away. Okay, so ocean, uh, this is down to, Al, Al, I, I, down, I think it's Al, Alviso, Aliso, Aliso, Aliso Beach. I think that that's right in Laguna Beach. And yes, yes, that's why people love it down there. Look at that. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Swells, they got good surf down there as well right now. Um, swells are gonna get real big, oops. Swells are gonna get real big the next couple of weeks. Um, so especially north of Cape Men, south of Cape Mendocino and north of Point Conception. So kind of in that zone from Big Sur up to Santa Cruz, up to San Francisco, up to um, Bolinas in those areas. So the swell's going to stay big. Um, this is going to be dangerous. Crab fishermen, you know, I'm talking to you. Uh, and then this is ski week. It's the end of ski week, which is, is it sad? It could be sad. Um, kind of a nice day up there. A little, probably a little warm for the skiing, but I've heard, I talked to, um, Mike Rodart up there, a friend of mine who lives in uh, Tahoe or in Truckee, and he said, yeah, the skiing was unreal yesterday. I think this is KT, and actually I think, I can't tell, I think this is the shoot they had, remember a couple years ago they had that avalanche in there or last year or two years ago, and that's, I think that's the shoot. Um, but, and they, they, there's no concern for avalanche right now. This is Heavenly Valley, and one of the prettier mountains for sure. Families out enjoying the last gasps of ski week. I've said this before, but skiers are, the ski resorts make all their money, all their money, at least this is how it used to be. It's, I don't know how much it's changed, but between um, Thanksgiving and President's Day, which is essentially this week, um, President's Week off, um, which is interesting, right? You think, oh, they make it up. No, not really. They make it all in this, this, this period. So people skiing, nice day. Hope you have a nice day. I have... Um, yeah, got an interesting week ahead. I'm actually really stoked because I like I like I don't like change, but I do like challenge. And this is a challenge um, to get like because like people who know who I am don't watch YouTube. So you guys, most of you guys, some of you guys do, but most of you guys are like, who's this dude? Which I kind of like because it's like starting over again. And that for me has been a, an absolute. Um, uh, respite, a joy. I have a buddy, Tom Tolbert, and if you know, he played basketball for the Warriors. He's uh, um, commentates for the CBS, the, the professional games, and he's retired. And he just started a podcast, and it's going to be fun to see how his stuff goes because he's he's just an awesome. Um, he's just like to me, he's like Rogan. I mean, he's really good. But I do like, it's kind of fun to start over again. We've talked, he and I have talked about it a little bit. And it's just like, it's like when I was a little kid. So, eh, I'm, and I'm not a little kid, I'm a big kid. All right, I rambled a little bit, but it's Sunday. It's Sunday. Okay. Hey, I appreciate all the kind notes, by the way. Oh, if you're still here, if you're still here, leave me a comment. I'm curious. Like, I don't know. Like, I literally, if I was watching this thing, I would have been gone after the first Ocean Beach wave camera. I really would have been. I mean, I love me, but I'm like, ah. Screw this old guy's gonna keep talking. So if you're still here, be interested. Um, but oh, I was gonna ask you too, if you are still here, could you go to your Facebook page and could you share this link and say that this guy's awesome? I know, it's wrong. It's like soupy sales. You guys remember that? Back in the 50s, this is God's truth story. This is what's the best thing about being old is I remember stuff. Soupy Sales was a TV black and white guy from the 60s, black and white being television. And he had a kid's show that was, I think it was out of LA, but they kind of syndicated it, I believe. I think, yeah, maybe it was out of LA, but it was big, right? LA TV, six, early 60s, late 50s. And the son of a gun, he's got all these kids and he, they do what he wants. He's got an, and he's like, hey, everybody, hey kids, what I want you to do. Shit, I kid you not, he did this. I want, Google it. 
I want you to go into your parents' room. They're probably still asleep. And I want you to grab some money out of their wallet. I kid you not. And then send it to me. Old soupy sales. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I'm going to Google it as soon as I get done with you guys. But that actually happened. And I believe he got many, many dollars for it. So Google that. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for, thanks for hanging in. See ya.